Welcome to my DIY sewing room. It took 10 months of sewing, crafting, and organizing this room from blah, boring room to ah, sewing room. So come on, I'll show you how it's done. The sewing curtains for this drab window was my first major DIY project. I used seven yards of purple and black stretch knit fabric and upcycled a duvet cover for my curtain lining. I sewed these curtains using a combination of my serger and hand sewing. It's so crazy to think we've been in this house for six months already and this is the first thing I've been able to sew. It's relieving and exciting and a little bit stressful all at the same time. And top them off with these gorgeous thrifted curtains. I feel like I could just hide in these curtains and never come out. I lined the walls of my sewing room with old and thrifted furniture so I didn't have to spend any money on storage. And next I took on the gargantuan task of refurbishing this DIY dresser that had been left to rot in a shed for who knows how long. So I brought it inside and cleaned it off. I started by separating the drawers from the base of the dresser. I threw out all the moldy, rat poop infested rags. I removed the filthy backing and replaced it with this gorgeous sunflower and bird fabric. And line all the drawers with wallpaper, which was a mess, but worked out really well. It took a little bit of elbow grease and a lot of time to do. Normally it would have taken me like a week or two weeks to do this, but I took a month. I took a month to do this this time because I just didn't have the energy for it. And now this dresser is perfect for holding my sewing machines and precious, precious fabric. I tested out the sewing room with a few mending projects to get a feel for things and ended up rearranging all my furniture to really open up the space. I did some light cleaning on the furniture because it got a little dusty sitting in the garage for six months. And then I got to work organizing my fabric stash. And before I could organize all my fabric, I first had to wash a lot of boxes of fabric that I had inherited from my aunt. I separated all my fabric by color and type for the wash removed all the tags, surged all the edges, and spent about two weeks washing and drying all this fabric. I grabbed all my suitcases, loose boxes, and piles of fabric to start organizing them and putting them on shelves. I stored most of my fabric on these old thrifted shelves. My more fine fabrics and the fabrics I inherited from my aunt, I am storing in my upcycled dresser. Part of the reason I went through all the effort to line these drawers with wallpaper was so I wouldn't have to worry about any of this fabric getting damaged because it's very precious to me. I had a scrap of fabric extravaganza sorting all my scrap fabric into these stackable drawers. Well, that was exhausting, but it was well, well worth it, and I finally, after months, feel like I am starting to have a sewing room here. And I used some really crappy curtain rods to hang these gorgeous antique curtains my mother-in-law gave me to protect all my fabric from sun damage. Hey guys, it is so hot today that when I came in here, I found a dead fly on the ground that had died of heat exhaustion. So I am going to try and not die of heat exhaustion today while I'm filling up this craft cabinet. I'm going to start with this box of like painting stuff that I have not opened in two years and since it's been through two moves, stuff is just all jumbled up and spilled in here. So hopefully nothing is damaged.
These are one of my most prized possessions, a 150 pack of Prismacolor pencils. I keep them very safe in this top drawer. All right, I gotta show you guys this. So this is what my work looked like in school. I turned this into my science class. This was like our daily like question of the day. If you can't tell, I was a doodler. This is the back of what my hall passes look like. And I found a ton of old artwork from high school that I might put up on these walls at some point. I just have to figure out some layouts and get some picture frames. And there is some clothing in here that I've been planning to upcycle so they can go on that shelf over there. This box was pretty slim on the craft supplies so let me go get some other boxes and bags. This is a travel sewing kit I made with stitch rippers. It's got a needle and thread, little scissors, and some pins too. I got a fair amount of boxes and bags put into my craft cabinet today, and I am just sweltering in this heat right now. It's so hot, and I don't have AC in this room. I just have a ceiling fan. So I think I'm done for today. But I will fill this craft cabinet. It finally cooled off this week, and so I got my craft cabinet mostly put together. Inside, we have a pretty rough organization. I'm probably going to add a few more things as I continue to unpack other boxes that we have, but I think this placement's pretty good so far. Those dress forms will probably get moved at some point, but I don't know where to put them yet. And then I have a ton of mason jars full of antique buttons. I have over 10 jars of buttons here that my aunt collected from estate sales. And there's some really cool stuff in here, but it's gonna take a while to sort. I've only gone through about a fifth of it so far. I like to keep the top shelf pretty empty because I like to store projects I'm working on here just to keep them away from Kujo because he likes to nibble on everything he can get his little mouth on. But I do have some buttons and some paper patterns up here and I will put a lot more patterns once I do dig them up, unpack them, and store them. They'll probably end up here. I've also organized these shelves into different types of crafting supplies like thread, scissors, and other sewing notions. These are paints, paint brushes, and anything to do with like drawing, stuff like that. Some miscellaneous sewing supplies that I don't use as often as the thread and other stuff. Some plastic boning and my punch needle kit. General crafting supplies like uh, glue, tape, glitter glue, felt, uh, feathers, just random stuff that I can craft with. Bias binding, zippers, a lace, trims, elastic, just a general miscellaneous uh, sewing edgings and trims. And I put some lace and trims in my stackable drawers as well. This isn't perfect, but I can work with it. I DIY'd my own curtain ties using black crochet thread and these upcycled crystals we tore off the ceiling fan in the bedroom because they clacked together and made a really awful noise when he turned it on. But attaching these curtain holes back to the wall was quite the trying process since I had to deal with a bunch of metric screw nonsense and had to get really creative with the solution. But that was the last major project I had for my sewing room. This room is almost done, but I still have one big problem left, and that is this gorgeous floor. As pretty as it is, it is still too hard for me. It's uncomfortable to sit on, it's uncomfortable to stand on, and I sew a lot. I do a lot of crafting on the floor, so I need something more comfortable. So I got a big fluffy rug. And don't let the shrink wrap packaging confuse you. This is a huge rug that will cover my entire sewing room floor. 
<laughs> this rug is so fluffy. I love it. And this rug was one of the few things I bought new for the sewing room because I fortunately was gifted over $100 in Amazon gift cards between Christmas and my birthday. Could you stop eating the rug? It is new. You can't just go and eat a new rug like that. I've been really good about sticking to my budget for this DIY sewing room makeover, even though it's taken a lot longer than I expected. I've just had so much that's gotten in the way, and like the three main things are we're still arguing with the insurance company about fixing our house after the sewage backed up the first week we moved here. I've been dealing with a lot of health issues the last few years, which have fortunately gotten a lot better since we moved in, and I'm doing a lot better, I have a lot more energy, but earlier on in the year I still had a lot of fatigue and it was hard for me to get in here and work on projects. And I recently started a part-time job, which is exciting, but also exhausting. And it's taken some time away from here. So I just had to juggle a lot of different things going on, and I'm really glad I finally have a sewing room to work with. It's not completely done yet, and it's probably never going to be completely done yet. But it is usable right now. It is usable how it is right now. And that is relieving, it's exciting, and I'm ready to get sewing. I'm ready to get sewing some clothing. So let's put a few more finishing touches on this room. I lightly ironed these old doilies, glued some broken decorations back together, and put together this really cool puzzle vase that somebody got me a while ago. I tried to organize some of my favorite skulls and other decorations in a nice way. And this music box sewing machine is one of my favorite pieces. A homemade quilt and pillows really brighten up the room along with some projects my grandmother made. And it'll probably take some time to figure out where I want everything to go permanently. But this closet is great for my ironing board, my irons, some yarn, batting, and some clothing that I've made. My old mirror slides over my door perfectly and Edgar can hang out with us too. And I can't forget my woven fabric scrap wall hanging. This is a small room to start with and I think I made the most out of the space for this sewing room makeover. And it was a very long 10 months getting this sewing room put together but I'm feeling really inspired by all these colors and DIY projects I made and this big fluffy purple rug and I'm really excited to get sewing. I have so many projects I want to make but I really want to get back into sewing clothing. So I hope you guys will subscribe to my channel and come join me. I can't wait to show you guys my new projects that I'm going to make in this awesome sewing room. So I hope I'll see you guys next time.